physical scientists and math learners, I'm Miss Martins and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a lesson. Tell me what topic you would like to see next. Enjoy the lesson. Today we're starting with electricity. Now I just want to let you know that for the first few lessons we're going to be doing revision. Although it's revision so we've done it before but it's going to be stuff that you need to do, know how to do for this year as well. So it's not like you can listen to what I have to say and then just forget about it. It's important stuff. And I will also give you guys the code to my grade 10 Google Classroom if you want. And then you can watch their videos for like a more in-depth grade 10 explanation. Because obviously I'm going to go over it, but more briefly for you guys. Okay, so electricity, just to recap, remember we need a complete circuit in order for an electric current to flow so a closed switch and we also need a little pathway so these are the conducting wires like copper wires and we need a push so the push is provided by a battery or power supply so the push comes in for in the form of voltage potential difference and that is provided by a battery or cells okay the power supply so here in this case there's a little battery it provides push to the electrons pushes it around the circuit which will result in current and therefore our little components will light up and work. Here's our components of a circuit. Last year you guys filled in this little table for me. You should be familiar with how the different symbols look for the electric components. If not, you need to go back in your book. Here we talk about a battery. That's basically your little powerhouse. It provides the push in the circuit. It consists of one or more cells. So here's one cell. Here's two cells. And what happens is in a battery, we get a conversion from chemical potential energy to electrical energy. You know this. Inside the battery, there's a lot of chemistry going on, and this chemical energy will be converted to electrical energy in the circuit. Okay, so it's very important to note that the battery basically transfers its energy to the electrons, to the charges. It doesn't make energy. It doesn't make charge. It gives energy to the charge allowing them to flow so the battery gives energy to the charges which causes them to flow and this energy is then given or transmitted to the different components like the light bulb allowing it to light up conducting wire it's metal often copper and it gives a pathway for the charge to flow from one terminal of the battery to the other terminal of the battery then obviously we have switches, we need it to be a closed complete circuit. If we open the switch, we disrupt the current flow, we disrupt the flow of charge and there's no flow of electricity. Resistors, we know that basically what electricity is, it's a flow of your charge which results in current. So your electrons flow and what happens in a resistor is the electrons are obstructed. So they collide with one another and they collide with the core of the atoms, they collide with the material in the resistors and this causes them to slow down. So resistors resist the flow of charge. So if we have a high resistance, then the flow will be limited and it, it allows us to control the strength of a current. And we have resistor can be illustrated here like a little box or as a lamp that's, or a bulb, it's also a resistor. A rheostat is a variable resistor. We can change the resistance. An ammeter is connected in series like that. It measures current. Voltmeter is connected in parallel because it has a very high resistance and it measures, measures potential difference between two points. So this voltmeter is measuring the potential difference across this resistor. We can also connect a voltmeter across the battery. And here I just ask you to draw a circuit with these things. This is um, my grade 10 PowerPoint. I'm going through this quickly because you've done this last year. There's my circuit. My two cells for my battery, closed switch, ammeter connected in series. That's a light bulb. That's a rheostat. That's a resistor. And we have a voltmeter connected across that resistor over there. Okay, so that's a very, very quick recap on what a circuit is and how it looks. Now let's just go over what potential difference is an EMF. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit more important, so I'll slow down a little bit here. So again, for an electric current to flow, it needs a complete circuit, it needs a pathway, 
and complete circuit, the switch will close, completing the circuit, and the pathway is the conducting wires. And here it also needs a push, so we said this, it needs a push to flow, and this push comes from the battery. So we said here, if you look inside a battery, there's lots of chemicals, and this chemical energy is converted or transformed into electrical energy. And the electrical energy is supply components in a circuit, and when this energy, for example, reaches a light bulb, the electrical energy is converted into light energy or heat energy. So when you touch this light bulb, it gets hot. So this is called potential difference or voltage. And what potential difference is, is it is a measure of the energy or work that is provided per unit of charge. So like I said, in the conducting wires, you're going to get electrons. So in a copper wire, you'll get electrons. The battery will give energy to these charges, to the electrons, and that will cause the push. So giving, putting a battery in a circuit means that it'll give energy to the charges and it'll push the electrons or charge around the circuit and that's what causes electricity. So here is your copper wire, your conducting material. It has the little electrons in it, so little copper electrons, and there's the positive kernels, the atoms, not too important, just know that these little free electrons are floating around in the conducting wire. Then when we attach a battery, the energy will be given to these little electrons and they will flow and therefore create a current. So that's basically what this is here. So they flow and the flow of charge results in an, in an electric current. Why do they flow? Because they were given a push by the battery. And this is just something you already know. The flow of charge is from the positive terminal of the battery. No? Yes. From the positive to the negative. But I'll get to that now. So, blah, 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 blah. They just move. Okay, I've said that. Then, potential difference. This is a formula you did last year, but just to recap nicely. Potential difference is equal to the amount of energy that the battery transfers to one coulomb of charge passing through it. So here's your formula, V is equal to W over Q. So what the battery does is the battery gives energy, which we can also call work, 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 yeah, energy transferred or work, okay, W, per coulomb of charge. So work or energy is given to the little coulombs of charge and that causes the flow of our current. So that's just what potential difference is and here, so here they say two coulomb of charge transfers six joules of energy. What is the potential difference? So my charge is two coulombs, it says that, two coulomb of charge transfers six joules of energy. So my energy or my work is 6 joules. They want to know what is the potential difference. So V is equal to W divided by Q. 6 divided by 2. So my potential difference is 3 volts. Remember voltage or potential difference is measured in volts. Okay, and there's the answer. Okay, then EMF. Now, this is going to be very important later on in grade 11. But I'm just going to briefly, briefly, briefly recap what this is. We will go into more detail in this video. But EMF stands for Electromotive Force. So if you go to the shops and you buy a battery, look on the bat sorry, look on the battery, there will be a little voltage that is stated on that battery. So it'll say maybe 1.5V or 5V. That is your EMF. That is the total amount of energy that the battery can supply to each coulomb of charge. But when we actually put this battery in a circuit and we connect a little voltmeter across, we see that the, the voltage drops. So let me just show you what I mean. So here I have a closed switch and my voltmeter might measure 8.5 volts. There's my battery connected in, in my circuit. I could have taken that same battery and connected it in a circuit 
but now I'm keeping the switch open. So here's my switch, it's open. And when I attach a voltmeter across this battery, I'm gonna get a reading of nine volts. So when I bought it in the shop, here's my battery. When I bought my battery off, it said nine volts on it, okay? Bought it in the shop, it said nine volts on it. I connected it in my little circuit. My switch is open, so there's no current, no flow of charge, no current. I measure the voltage or the potential difference across my battery, it says nine volts. Then I close the switch and a current starts to flow. My voltage is now 8.5 volts, it dropped. So what happens is the battery uses up some of the voltage because of internal resistance. So this is the EMF when the switch is open. When I close the switch, the battery uses some of the voltage and 8.5 volts is left. That's basically what it is, just very in, in, like in summary. So the EMF is measured by connecting the voltmeter across the battery when no current flows through the external circuit. So when the switch is open. So open switch, voltmeter across the battery, reads the EMF. This is what the battery says, 9 volts. It's the total amount of unit charge. But when we actually put it in the circuit, this drops, and that's because the battery itself uses up some of that energy. Okay, so back here. When the switch is closed, the voltmeter reads the potential difference and there's a drop in volts. This is called lost volts because of internal resistance of the battery. So in other words, the battery uses some of its own energy. So the EMF is higher, you close a switch, that voltmeter drops because the battery uses up some of its own voltage basically. And here are just some definitions for you to know. And then current, just quickly, I think current is one of the last ones. I'll do resistance in a separate video. Electric current is the rate of flow of charge. Okay, so what I mean by rate, when I say rate, it means I'm putting a time on it. It's per unit time. So current is equal to the rate, so we divide by time, of the flow of charge. That's why charge is also included in the formula. So it's the rate of flow of charge. It measures how much charge passes a certain point in one second. And we measure current in amperes. You should remember this from last year. So current is measured in ampere, charge is in coulombs, and time must be in seconds. And I said, yeah, that we're speaking about a rate. So current is the rate of flow. And because we're speaking about rates, we know that we've divided something by time. Here's an example. Calculate the current that passes through a lamp if 30 coulombs of charge flows in five seconds. So formula, I is equal to Q divided by change in time. Your Q, your charge is 30. Your time is five seconds. Your current is six amperes. Here's another one. A current of 0.45 amperes flows through a light bulb for one hour. Now remember the time must be in seconds, so you need to convert that. How much charge passes through the light bulb in this time? There's your formula, same formula. Your current here is given. 0.45 amperes. Q is what you're finding, how much charge. So you're looking for Q. And your time, they say one hour. You need to convert it to seconds. So you first convert to minutes, times by 60, times by 60 again to get it to seconds. That's why it's 3,600 seconds. Your charge is 1,620 coulombs. Okay, this is grade 10 examples. We measure current strength on an ammeter. It's connected in series because it has a very low resistance, so we can connect it in series. Yeah, you can see this is a voltmeter. It's connected in parallel because it has a high resistance. All revision, grade 11s. If you're freaking out about this, then it means you did not pay attention to me last year. Okay, Whew. direction of current. Now, last year we discussed that we get two different types of current, essentially, electron current and conventional current. We work with conventional current. We use this in school. So conventional current is we basically taking the direction in which positive charges move. So we go positive to negative. That is conventional current here. So from the positive terminal of the battery, the long um, line here, to the negative. That's conventional. Electron is 
how an electron would move. So an electron would move from a negative to a positive. Think about it like this. An electron would be repelled from this negative and it would travel through and be attracted to the positive. So that's electron current, negative to positive, and conventional current is positive to negative. Okay, we work with conventional current. Okay, now in tomorrow's video, I will go through resistance. Just too much for one day to recap it all now. But yeah, hope that's fine for you guys. Let me just show you very quickly. Here are the definitions from last year. Potential difference, EMF, uh, current 